Hi, so my name's Sue Dutoir. Thanks a lot for having me. Uh, I'm going to try to fly through these seven minutes. Um, as a child, I used to enjoy taking stuff apart. I started taking apart alarm clocks and watches and coffee makers just to see how they worked. And I like taking apart broken stuff and seeing if I could put it back together. Um, then in high school, I got really into music and sound. And I started playing with stereos that I found at flea markets and garage sales. And I started figuring out that I could actually fix these things. Um, a lot of times, it's just like one little wire would be had fallen off inside, and I could solder it back together, and it would work. So I had to deal with some buddies in high school. If anybody had something broken, they could bring it to me. And if I could fix it, I'd give it back to them. But if I couldn't fix it, or if it blew up in the process, then I'd keep it for parts. And so the, <laughs> what I found was that by experimenting, I learned a lot about electronics. I had never taken any classes or even read any books about electronics. But by blowing things up, uh, I learned what not to do. And that, in turn, taught me what to do. Uh, so later on in college, I was able to take some electronics classes and learn more about this sort of stuff. But I still feel that experience is the absolute best way to go about learning. Um, I did a bunch of school. I originally started in architecture and then switched to music. Uh, and then as a musician, moved into building my own instruments because I wanted to not have any rules imposed upon me about how I was supposed to play instruments. So I just built my own, and then I got to make my own rules. Um, and from that, I moved into building uh, kinetic and interactive art and also these sound installations that I'm going to show you in a moment. And now I'm in a PhD program learning even more about music and people. So like Nemo, I had the great fortune to be selected to be an artist in residence at Recology, which, as Nemo has told you, was awesome and amazing. So not only not only did I have this great studio to work in with all these tools, but I had access, as Nemo said, to all this great stuff that people were throwing away. And for someone who likes to experiment freely, it meant that I had all the electronics I could possibly blow up, and I blew a lot up. <laughs> but that also meant that I learned a lot along the way. And I started playing a lot with TVs. Uh, I had heard of this thing called Wobble Vision that was just floating around on the internet, and I finally got up the guts, because it's really dangerous to get in the back and mess with TVs, but I finally got up the guts, and I put on big rubber gloves and rubber boots, and I covered my face, and I got in, and I cut a couple wires, and I hooked them up to a stereo, and what I have, it's out on the floor, actually, you can see one of my wobble visions, but what it allows me to do is take audio and basically push a beam of light around so that you can literally see the sounds that you're making. So I got into making wobble visions, did a lot of stuff with that, and then I also got into building these sound sculptures. Because I had been working for myself to build instruments um, that use contact mics to amplify little sounds so that I could play improvised music with people. But I thought, how cool would it be to share this with people? I'm so excited about all these little sounds that we take for granted. So part of what I like to do is, is show people sounds visually, but then also give them a chance to hear these sounds. So I just took a colander and stuck a bunch of springs into it Here's a, oh, whoops, we'll go back. Um, stuck a bunch of springs into it, put a contact mic on it. And my idea with this instrument is that people get to come up and experiment freely with it and make a bunch of sound. The idea being that if you give somebody a guitar, the person, a lot of times people say, well, I don't know how to play the guitar. And then they won't even try to play it. Whereas if I give someone this instrument, which has no rules around it, everyone feels totally free to wang away on it and muck about and have a great time. And then the other idea in building these in sort of circular shapes is that one person comes up and starts playing, somebody else would get interested and come up on the other side. So then you have two people who might not consider themselves musicians, but suddenly they're, ha they're playing a duet. They're, doing, they're having a musical dialogue. And it's great, because even guys like this, I think might be the vice president of Recology, was in there goofing off like a little kid, making lots of sound. <clears throat> this is a similar thing that just um, takes the sound in from the space and makes these cool light patterns. Uh, so this was the piece that I did at the dump using that colander with a bunch of different wobble visions. I made this darkened room. It was this whole experience. And people mucked about and had a great time. And it was, it was totally an experiment. I thought, well, I'll, I'll try this out. And I had no idea how well it would work. And I was totally blown away and super inspired. So now, five years later, I'm coming back and building with um, some friends of mine, Liz Judkin, Daniel Yasmin, and Chris Cravey, we're building a bunch of pieces so we can fill a whole room with these kind of sound sculptures and cut people loose on them. Um, and I'm actually going to skip this video, but this is, this is one piece that isn't here, but the other two pieces are here. That's uh, a bunch of rebar and some tuned bicycle wheels. Yeah. And it's all
play around with it. But let's move on. I want to talk a little bit, since Nima was talking about pianos, I figure I might as well talk about pianos as well. I'm working on what I'm calling a, a prepared player piano pinball system, <laughs> in which, uh, yeah, I'll just play the video and then I can talk about it a little bit. This is a time lapse of me working on it. Um, and this piano I found at the dump. On the left hand side on the bass strings are a couple foosball table guys, and they're hooked up. Oh, we don't have sound. There's a little bit of sound there. Anyway, the, the idea is that these ping pong balls are moving around inside here, and the foosball guys are trying to keep the ping pong balls off of the low strings, and the little baby hands that are spinning in the center there <laughs> are trying to get the ping pong balls out of there. And every time the ping pong balls you know, get out of the playing field, this little um, elevator made out of bicycle chain and, and spokes lifts the ball back up and throws them back into play. And this is all still, I mean, I have years and years and years to work on this, because I have to move up. Like Nemo and Kathy, I have tons of stuff collected. And so I got to use all this stuff up, I decided, at a certain point. I thought, why not just put it all into this piano? I can put everything I have. I've got it organized, just like Nemo, so I know where it is. Now I just have to find a place to put it. And then, and then maybe, right, and maybe I, I'll get rid of this stuff. And then I, I can start collecting something else. Maybe I'll start collecting stamps, and I can stack them up in really small spaces and move to New York. <laughs> so anyway, that's the...